Welcome to the African Album Review Podcast, where we review Africa's best and latest music projects. Africa, Muri say. My name is MJ Omoto, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a rundown of Ofa, Oxlade from Africa by Oxlade. The clock starts now. The latest African album review is... The intro to Ofa is an audio movie. I mean, the soundscapes, the vividness, it really gets you. It takes us back to the time when Oxlade's manager, Ojabi, was badly injured at the hands of the Nigerian police during the NSARS protests in 2020. A reminder of the brutality the ordinary citizen faces in Nigeria at the hands of the police imagine, and many African countries for that matter. I thought it was so awesome that Oxlade also got Bobby Wine to reinforce the message on this intro. Unsurprisingly, no stranger to police brutality himself in his home country of Uganda. That's what makes this intro titled The PTSD Interlude so powerful, particularly in opening this album. And there we establish a strong connection to the title of the album. He may have found a way to make it an abbreviation. However, in Yoruba, the word Ofa means an arrow, something that clearly signifies his intent in addressing many issues directly through his music, and particularly this one, which could put him in the line of fire anyway. Track 2 is titled Olai Tan Olao Lua, and this, oh, <laughs> this one is a beauty to behold, or oh, one to bless the ears rather. It set the tone for Ofa, and I believe Oxlade's middle name is actually Olai Tan, so the connection is there. Track 3 was interesting in how there was a really strong dance or feel to it and no surprise as it has popcorn on it this has everything in it to become a favorite and a hit song it's chilled with the right dose of melody good vocals and bass in it and you know as black people we love bass bro we love bass and honestly both artists showed what they're made of and i really tip the song to do some damage if it's pushed in the right way as if that wasn't enough. Oxlade decided to up the stakes by including the smash hit Kulosa and honestly I would have done the exact same thing because that song was really his career moment that sent him to a whole new level to the stratosphere bruh. He should milk that song until it is as dry as a rock or a piece of biltong. Anyway, I loved that after such a huge mammoth hit like Kulosa. He was able to drop another huge single thereafter in Intoxicated with Santa and Dave. This one definitely did some damage in 2023. And in August 2024, Oxlade dropped Ifa with uh, Fali Pupa, which did alright and is still in rotation, so time will tell how big it could get. I mean, when you get Oxlade and Fali Pupa together, uh, there's good chances of it um, yeah, becoming something huge. Of course, that's um, you know a mammoth collaboration with one of Africa's most loved musicians from DR Congo and a legend in his own right. You know, roughly about seven, I think, yeah, seven songs from uh, Ofa were released prior to the album dropping. So there's plenty of familiarity to accompany the new material. When it comes to the collabos, Ofa has some of the best acts in the world and it's a great cast for Oxlade to have considering his own talent by the way. There's Sakuri, Dave Popkan, um, Fali Pupa, Flavor, One Day Cole, Tommy Owo and there's plenty of A tier talent to choose from as well as to grow market influence by tapping into their listenership in their respective geographies as well which to me is a smart music marketing move. When I got to songs like RMF on the album, I was in such a feel-good portion of that album, in such a feel-good space, and the mid-tempo was perfect. I thought it was a nice surprise that the title track in itself was the last song on the album, 
which is an unusual but welcome way of doing it. Oxlade has a unique and interesting delivery. He might not have the greatest pipes, but he has fantastic soul to his voice. This makes his musicianship easy to find resonance and vibe with. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I like that he managed to find a gap with Kulosa, which he took advantage of, but didn't let it chain him sonically. Many times a huge hit like that might force an artist to remake the same song multiple times while sacrificing musical evolution because he's basically trying to relive that exact moment and manufacture the same hit. Not Oxlade, <laughs> he has navigated this very well. The first half of uh, Ofa has so much R&B feeling to the songs and that mix with Afro beats to really place him in his own lane that is well worked. There's so many quality songs on Ofa amongst the new ones not previously released and of those songs I loved Blessed with Popcorn, RMF uh, and actually Ololufe, Olaitan, Olua. So many Olas and Olos there. Uh, but yes, those four I think they stood out for me and they really sound amazing. That being said, I rate Offer Oxlade from Africa by Oxlade a solid 8.3 out of 10. This project is solid, man. It's really, really solid and it's great to listen to. You can actually, you know, go top to bottom uh, a few times without any monotony. So it's well worth. And before I dip, do check out my website, mjomoto.com. That's mjwemoto.com. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is MJ Omoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Dende. This podcast is hosted by MJ.